This episode is brought to you by FIFACoinsBuy.com. Use the code BUCKS to get 10% off your ultimate team coins. And G2A.com for the best cheap games. Hey guys, how's it going? Master Bucks here. Welcome to another Legion United Career Man episode. We're getting closer and closer to the end of Season 3, and that will be exciting. We'll have another J-Bucks Medal Ceremony. We'll go through all the awards, and it's just getting closer and closer. And then we get some more amazing signings back for pre-contracts. Oh, it's just going to be great. And then we can really start pushing and going for some big stuff. We're already in contention for some pretty big stuff already. We may or may not be able to crack top four by the end of this episode, if we get the right results, of course. And we're also got a semi, we've also got a semi final of an FA Cup coming up next episode. Here's the team I'm going up against Stoke City with. We're playing at home, so there we go. It's a basic starting level team. A few players a little bit tired and we're rotating. But uh, that is really a strong side there and very, very fully, pretty much fully fit as well. So that's good. No excuses. Let's have a good game. Stoke City, the ones that will get us kicked off here. Let's go. What are we going to do? They're going to throw it that way. Going to go this way and that way. Who's going to go? And coming in. Oh, he just goes for it. Bang. I didn't expect the shot. It was a good, uh, fair effort. Good tackle there from Liam Moore. We got it back again. Ah, uh, this quick passing, which is going to pay off so well. Niang, why are you bodying him? Just go. Start running for it. I didn't know what I was trying there, but there was no support. So, again, another corner. Yes, it is. And we make an actually brilliant tackle. We go... That That is actually a perfect tackle. That was absolutely sensational. Now, look at this. Shit. I wish I saw Niang, but I didn't have to. Because look at this bloke. He's got a few tricks of his own. Lacazette's a size, an absolute gun, and that's 1 0. And that will be half time. Well, it's, uh, don't really know exactly what to say about that half, apart from it was quite even, honestly. Stoke had some chances, we had some chances, but that man finished it. Oh, wow, that is a impeccable ball, a block, and it's wide shit. Tackle, hell. Oh, yes, that's great. There we go, Sam Byram. And now the lob through ball opportunity. Now for Lacazette, he's got to get in behind. That's exactly what he does. You've got to finish this one, surely. Oh my god, it's blocked. Hits. Wide. Oh, maybe I should have finessed it. I should have. I wanted to take it on his right foot, though. Huge. Massive. Oh my god, look at this right-hand side. Look at it. Oh, we just get the ball in a Niang. Not very convincing. I might have to do the exact same thing. He's done it to perfection. He's got to hit it. He's got to put it on target. Oh my god, no. This is not good enough. Now we're having way too many shots. We've got to be on target. And then we've got to think about... The possibility of conceding. We don't want to do that. If we won that header, oh, that would have opened up a fucking amazing counter-attack. But we didn't. And now we got this one. Surely the ball's going to get there. Surely we're going to get a little bit of luck. Yes, Niang. Yes, that's good. Good passing. Now Lacazette's got another chance. I'm just going to have to... Fake shot. Lay off. Finesse. Goal! Yes, brilliantly worked. Calm, patient, Niang's finished it. Those two combined really well there. Look, he could have shot, but there was a guy in front, so he lays it off in Niang, who just slots it. All right, booted it up, boots it up. It's gone. It's over. We're done. 2-1. few players getting some pretty high rating there. Let's see Lacazette getting the man of the match with the 8.5. He got a goal and an assist. Niang got the final goal as well. A couple of other players that rated well were Silvestri, who made a couple of nice saves. And there's one player that I'm surprised didn't get higher. Because he's the one that's going to get the man of the match. This is a player that has been a bit average throughout the season, unfortunately. And he's just, um, yeah, he's just not had a great... He's still been able to grow, and he's still one of our high-rated players. But he just really hasn't been as fantastic as what he has been in the first two seasons. And for our captain, you'd expect a little bit better. Yeah, Liam Moore. But Liam Moore is going to get the vote this time around. He will get the man of the match. And one more vote for his J-Bucks medal tally for this season, which would not be many. Because he has not been fantastic, but that was a solid defensive performance. I was very happy with most of my defenders today. This is nice to see as well. Domenico Berardi returning back from an injury because, yeah, he is probably my main right winger. I do like Niang, but I just like uh, Domenico Berardi just a little bit more because he's uh, just he may be a bit older, but he's much higher rated and he's a better technical uh, footballer as well. So I'd, I'd rather have him and Niang coming off of the bench providing a bit of pace. And now we get our first one of these, a youth player that wants out, Timo... Uh, Harbuck. Har Harbuck. I don't even, I don't even want to try. Now, Timo, unfortunately, is not one of our higher rated players. As a matter of fact, I swore his overall was a lot higher than that. And his potential isn't fantastic either, to be totally honest. It's a bit disappointing. But that being said, how much does it actually cost to get this guy? Let's offer him a contract. The signing, there is no signing fee. You literally just have to give him a $500 a week 
contract. It's almost a rip-off, really. I'm obviously going to give him that. And if he's no good, if he doesn't grow, then I'll just offload him and get a little bit of cash for him. And would you look at that? We just got an email from Renault Hawkins. So, wow, we're about to get another signing. I'm going to advance again. I just gave him a contract. Now, <laughs> odds on getting another one. What do we think? We've gotten a couple of notifications. No youth player wants out, but we get the youth, uh, youth scout monthly update. And this game, now, that is big because they're fifth, we're seventh. They've got a game on us, but they're only a point ahead of us as well. Newcastle, who are level on games, are two points ahead of us. Let's have a look at that table. Okay, as we look at the top three, we start to see that they're really getting away from us, especially when you think that fourth, uh, Newcastle United, and first, Chelsea, are 11 points apart. That's pretty much almost, well, it's not uncatchable, but it's very, very hard to sort of get there. So, um, <clears throat> anyway... If we can get a good result against Manchester United, a draw uh, or a win, I would be happy with that. I Again, I'm not happy with losses, but then again, I am not devastated with not beating teams like Manchester United. But if we do, then that means we overtake them on points with a game in hand that's massive. And this is exactly what you want to see. The whole team, full strength and full of fitness. They're 100% fit, which is great. Niang's still at the right winger spot, even though this man is now fit to play, even though he's got the Band-Aid symbol. I'm just going to let him rest a little longer. Um, and if we absolutely, once again, if we absolutely need him, if we're struggling, if Niang's given us nothing, then we'll get him in. So let's get into this game against Manchester United at Old Trafford. And there's their team. De Gea is still there. Okay, we'll see. By the time this video goes up, De Gea may or may not have moved. We're not sure, but we're in the middle of a debate. And there's still a lot of other really normal uh, Manchester United plays it. Wow. I'll be straight up with you. Looking at that team, it's very, very similar, extremely similar to the Manchester United lineup and uh, roster right now. It's almost like they haven't made any changes. And he's angry about that. I know he wants another goal now. Let's see if we can get one for him. Or let's see if we can get Sarko something. Hit that on the volley. Oh, I wanted to go for something special. Unlikely, but special. Maybe not exactly smart when you're playing against Manchester United and you'll do anything you can to score goals. Oh, dearie me. Nearly, nearly. Big move. Nice and nice move. You've given space to run. He's going past Chris Smalling. Chris Smalling's not that quick. The slide tackle. He's got him. The low cross. The tap. Oh, it's a brilliant save, De Gea. Maybe it could have been a little bit more to the right. I tried to get it in that corner. And another tackle. Mate, we're on. We're killing it. We are fucking killing it. And that ball is amazing. And that goal is stunning. We've got him again, and our relentless pressure, and attack, and attack, and attack, finally pays off. Lacazette will fucking toe poke, and just scrape it in off the post. I don't care, it's in. Oh, this is good. This is really, really good. Wow, that lob through ball straight away. Straight fucking away. And he's in a tremendous spot. That, okay, no. Well, that was a perfect over the ball, and, you know, Moore was, I was smashing the B button, trying to put him off, but he just finished it. And half time, they get one back about 40th minute or so, just before the stoppage time comes in. And now it's 1-1. Yeah, one, one. They had a couple of attacks a little later on after we scored our goal, so I can't say that they didn't deserve it, but yeah, it's 1-1. One, one. Whenever you're ready, seriously, get him back on. I need him. Fake shot's brilliant. Side attack was brilliant. Fucking Sarko, you stupid fucking motherfucker, you got in the way of the shot. We're going to have to make the sub. Wow, they're, they're, they're forcing us to make the sub. We just got a fucking guy back from injury. And now we've lost our number one striker. We've now lost our main guy. You're fucking kidding. Cross. Or at least win the corner. Fuck, we can't even cross. They're going to get it out. No. Going to win the header. You are fucking kidding me! Oh, Bentaleb! You don't head that. Look at these dicks. They don't give a fuck. They didn't give a fuck. Bentaleb, you're a fucking... So player ratings here. We see Marco Silvestri getting a 7.5. Lacazette with the 7.4, obviously he scored, and then Barluli with 7.2, he assisted. And then a few other honourable mentions, Julian Brandt did very well today. Benta Pleb, apart, uh, before he turned into Benta Pleb there right at the end, he was actually alright as well. But surprisingly, only getting a 6.7 rating is going to be Bakary Sarko, the man of the match, and getting the vote for this game. I thought that he honestly was quite great. I mean, he completed pretty much every pass and every dribble. He was on the ball quite a lot, and he really made a mistake, and everything that he did was quite dangerous, and really causing problems for Man U. So that was a great performance by him and he should get it. Some good news and then some bad news and we're going to have the good news first. All right, contract offer has been accepted for Renault Hawkins, but basically that is, a, that is a given. That always happens when you sign someone out. I think it's now, I've never gotten anything different. Now, player injured, what have we got him for? Six, two weeks. I said anything over a week I'd be, I'd be unhappy about. I'm pretty fucking annoyed that we've lost him. 
Zardes is now our only striker. I do think it means that we get him back before the FA Cup game, or at least I'm pretty confident about it anyway, two weeks. I'm pretty, I'd be pretty sure about that, but still, we'll continue. And now let's have a look at this man. This is Rene Hawkins. He is uh, maybe not the greatest physical and mentally uh, challenged, or what am I saying? 79 curve, 75 free kick accuracy, 79 long pass, 77 long shot. And some decent other stats there. His crossing's good. His finishing's actually quite good. And then his penalties, his shot power, around 66 volleys. This is not a bad player, especially for one that's only 69 rated. I think, honestly, his technical, or should I say his mental attributes and physical attributes are actually so average and so poor that they're actually bringing his overall down. He's technically probably around low 70s. This guy has a potential of 80 to 85. I don't think I have that much patience, and I don't think I have that much fucking... What's the word? I don't know. I don't think we'll be able to get... We'd, we'd need like 300 episodes for him to get anywhere near decent to get into the team. I reckon something tells me I'm probably going to just sell that guy next transfer window. You never know, unless he just shoots up by about 10 in like half a season, which just won't happen. And the final game away against Norwich City. This is a starting 11 team, apart from Zardes now filling at the striker spot for the injured Lacazette. But again, he, despite being much lower rated, 10 overall points lower, does not really weaken the team too much. He's still a very good striker for his overall. Now let's go. Now here is Norwich City. I don't know if their goalkeeper is recently signed. Uh, Nua Onua, I think, has gone. Lee Catamol's there, that's new. Uh, Murphy as well, and yeah, some interesting ones. I won't be embarrassed in admitting that I've never really been completely fluent with Norwich City's roster, but I feel like there are a couple of recent signings in there, or new signings, uh, so we'll see how they go. Stolen. And that through ball is actually brilliant. We've got Anua chasing, who is quick. Just tapping under him. It's a brilliant finish! He's just slotted that. Just a little pass into the corner of the net. Righty, go on. Slot out the back. No. Oh, cut that. Oh, no. Oh, shit. That's really good. I hate it when they do this. Fuck, I hate it when they do this. They just pass around the edge of our box. Thankfully, it just falls perfectly to the man. Oh, that's really good. Norwich is stuck. No, that clearance is terrible. There's no one in front. Great save. Now Silvestri is starting to... Well, it's not an amazing save, but it is a good save. Pressing hard. They're not giving us a lot of space right now, but this is good. Oh, look. Th this is really good. Look at this. Oh my god, how'd that get in? He just kicked it right down the middle of the goal. But Zardes gets another one. Barati with a through ball that I, sh I was so confident it was going to get uh, picked off. Has this this has got to be like a nutmeg or something, surely. No, it's just behind him. And uh, just like this slight tackle animation, which in that circumstance, it makes sense. Blocked. They're still keeping the fucking ball. They get every bloody bounce. I'm taking the initiative. No, actually, no, I don't want to do that. Oh, what am I thinking? Every fucking time I go to get him a fucking hat-trick and I'm like, fuck keeping a structure. I'm just going to go for it and see if I can make the tackle. I lose shape and I fucking concede. So there goes my clean sheet. Fucking Zardes. Why? Oh. And that's the game. Easy. Unfortunately, we concede late there and we lose our clean sheet, which is more of his problem than mine. We still get maximum points, three points, and one goal added to our goal difference. Could have been two, but fucking Zardes. I do too much. I do too many favors for you. But with all that said, I'm just gonna have to give credit to two and give man of the match to one. And I think we're just gonna go with the guy that scored two goals, even though he cost me clean sheet. We're gonna go Yazi Zardes. There we go. Eight point four has to get it. Surely got man of the match. We'll get mutual man of the matches because we haven't had that in a while. I don't think. But there we go. Zardes, another man of the match. He's definitely filling in for the injured um uh, for injured Lacazette. And now depending on yeah four days, depending on how much time there is left, we may or may not hear back. From not nothing, we just get an, uh, an offer for an inter yeah, international. Why? Can't speak English. Now there's only four days between that game and this one against QPR. We don't hear anything back. We're still seventh. Still have a game on a number of teams though. For example, Man United, who are now a point behind Arsenal. We're two points behind Everton. We're four points behind with, what, how many games? That's seven games left to go in the BPL. And despite not getting an email, it actually appears that we could play with Lacazette. He is... Still, you know, a little bit uh, niggling at the moment with that uh, Band-Aid. But I think that I'm probably still going to play it safe and play the next game with Zardes. But yeah, we haven't gotten an email yet, and yet we could still play with him. That was odd, I never noticed that. But anyway, we've got this game. It's a couple of days after the Norwich game, so a few of my players are a bit tired. I'll rotate a little bit. And then after this game, it's the semi-final of the FA Cup against Newcastle United. My goddamn real team, my goddamn bogey team. We'll see how we go. I know all semi-finals of the FA Cup in real life are played on Wembley. 
So does that mean that we're going to Wembley? That would be sweet. That'd be our first trip to Wembley. That'd be sick. But we'll find that out, I guess, in the next episode, won't we? But until then, my name's Mark Spikes. Thank you so much for watching this one. Have a good one, and catch you later. Bye-bye.